Hi you guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Julia Pacheco. I just wanted to hop on here really really quickly and just thank you guys. So we just hit 2,000 subscribers this past week and that's just absolutely crazy to me. I'm just still surprised that people even watch my videos and even subscribe. So thank you so so much from the bottom of my heart. It really does mean a lot to me. Trust me. So thank you. And then one last thing before we get on to the video. I'm going to be putting the total cost of every single meal at the end of the meal so pretty much like when the dinner is made so if you guys enjoy that let me know in the comments down below but let's get on to the video to kick this week off I made this delicious white chicken chili recipe it is also a crock pot recipe so that's like a win-win in my books but I just have some of those fresh green chilies and I just cut them up and peel them and do all that stuff with them but you could easily just use a can of green chilies or no green chili at all but these are all the ingredients you guys will be needing I'm just going to start by chopping and peeling up my fresh cilantro along with my green chilies and my little lime. One thing I want to mention to you guys is that this recipe is not just a crock pot meal. You could do it on your stove top if you do not have a crock pot. So that's super nice because I know a lot of you guys don't have a crock pot so that will help you guys a lot. So I just added my chicken broth, my drained and rinsed corn, and then my two cans of some navy beans into my crock pot. As far as the spices, I just added a teaspoon of some cumin, a half a teaspoon of oregano, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, an eighth a teaspoon of cayenne, and then a teaspoon of salt, and then a little bit of ground black pepper to taste. This recipe is seriously just so easy. It's kind of like a dump and go crock pot meal, which I love, but I just added my onions in there and then my fresh cilantro along with those green chilies. Again, if you don't have the fresh green chilies, just use a four ounce can and that will be perfect for you guys. And then I just squeezed a fresh lime in there. And then as far as the chicken, my chicken breast was actually frozen, but that's totally fine because it just cooked perfectly well. It was cooking for about six hours on low. After those six hours of cooking, I just pulled that chicken breast out and then shredded it. Also, if you have a bigger family, you could use multiple chicken breasts, just to let you know. And then I just added that chicken breast shredded back into the crock pot, along with a half a cup of some sour cream. I used the low fat sour cream because that's just what my store has right now, but I really do prefer the full fat sour cream it just tastes so much better to me also if you have that plain greek yogurt you could use plain greek yogurt as a substitute of sour cream if that's what you like and then i just stirred it all together and then put the lid on high for about 20 minutes and then here is what it looks like all cooked through this was so so delicious we actually both had it for leftovers the next day and made quite a bit i just garnished it with some tomatoes lime cilantro and some more sour cream it was so so yummy for Tuesday's dinner, we made some broccoli chicken casserole. If you don't like broccoli chicken casserole on this one, you gotta trust me and just watch it. I think you guys will actually like this recipe. So to start out, I just have my saucepan right there. I just sprayed a little bit of oil, and then I just have a pound of chicken that I chopped up and cubed, and I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of some salt and pepper, and then a little bit of some garlic powder and some onion powder and a little paprika. I just cooked it on medium high heat until it got totally cooked through. 
For the pasta, I had to use this whole grain penne pasta because my store only has whole grain pasta right now, but you could use any type of pasta you have on hand. Once the chicken was totally cooked through, I just brought it over to this separate plate right here, covered it with aluminum foil, and then just set it aside. Alrighty, so now let's work on the sauce. So to begin the sauce, I just have that same pan right there I used to cook the chicken, and then I put in about a tablespoon of some olive oil, and then I put in one chopped up brown onion. I just stirred it together until that onion got translucent. Then I pressed in three garlic cloves, and I just stirred those garlic cloves into those onions and just let it get fragrant. So it took me about three minutes for that. For this step, after those garlic cloves were fragrant, you're going to be adding in three tablespoons of some all-purpose flour, and then you're just going to be keeping it on medium heat, and then just whisk it together because you do not want that flour to be clumpy. You just want it to be incorporated in that oil and that onion. And then once it is incorporated all together, you're going to add your chicken broth. Now it is time for your milk, salt and pepper and Dijon mustard. Just to let you guys know, I'm not the biggest fan of Dijon mustard. So if you're not either, then you're probably gonna like this recipe because I seriously did not even taste it. In this recipe, I think it just added some great flavor and also it's just a teaspoon of that Dijon mustard. So, you know, it's not very fragrant in it. <laughs> Now you'll be adding in about a cup of some sharp cheddar cheese and you'll be saving another cup of that cheese for on top. And then you're just gonna whisk it together and let it get well combined. So for that penne pasta, I just drained it really well and then stuck it in my nine by 13 baking dish and then put that sauce directly on top of that penne pasta. And then as far as the broccoli, I just used this steamable bag of broccoli. I did steam it in the microwave first but you could use fresh broccoli. You're just gonna to wanna to steam it a little bit beforehand. And then I added in the chicken that we chopped up earlier and cooked through. I just stirred it all together just like that and then added that extra cup of that cheese on top and then baked it in the oven. This turned out absolutely delicious. We actually had my brother over for dinner on this night and he's not the biggest broccoli casserole fan, but he absolutely loved it. So this is a great meal to make for picky eaters and then we just served it alongside of a side salad and I just used this Thousand Island dressing. This was a delicious meal. For Wednesday's dinner, we had our meatless meal of the week, and this definitely was a crowd pleaser. We all loved it. I'm just starting by cooking two cups of white rice in that pot. You could definitely use brown rice if that's what you have on hand, but I just have a lot of white rice right now. To start the casserole portion of this meal, I just have a tablespoon of this olive oil. I'm just putting in my huge pot right there. If you have a Dutch oven, that would work better, but I just don't have one. And then I'm adding about a cup and a half of some yellow onions right on top of that oil. And then I'm just letting it saute and become translucent. Once it is translucent, you're just going to add your diced tomatoes with jalapenos right on top. Next, you're gonna be adding your drained and rinsed corn along with your drained and rinsed black beans. I just stirred it together and then let it come up to a simmer and then now we're gonna be adding our spices. The spices are just a teaspoon of chili powder, three teaspoons of cumin, a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne, a teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of pepper to taste. Now 
Now we're gonna be adding in our two tablespoons of some cream cheese and then just stirring it together and letting it melt down. If you're not the biggest cream cheese fan, don't you worry. You definitely don't have to add it in and this recipe will still taste good. You're also gonna be adding in your enchilada sauce. This is just the red chili enchilada sauce. Once your rice is through cooking, you're just gonna measure out four cups of that rice and then just add it into that delicious casserole. Also, you're gonna be adding in a cup and a half of cheese along with that lime right now, and you're just gonna mix it all together and just let it come up to a simmer for about five minutes. Here's what it looks like all plated up. We just had it alongside of some Roma tomatoes, some guacamole, and then we dipped some chips in there and some limes. This was so, so delicious, and we had plenty of leftovers for lunch the next day. This was so good for a meatless meal. Also, I just wanted to let you guys know, I just made some homemade queso on the side. This is the copycat recipe of the Chili's queso. And I also made a video on that. So I will have the video linked in my description box below if you want to check out that recipe. For this night's dinner, we made these delicious carnitas burritos. And here are all the ingredients you're going to need to make these burritos. To start, I have my three pounds of pork shoulder in my crock pot right there, and then I am just adding my full diced up brown onion along with my chicken stock. Next, you're just gonna mince your three cloves of garlic. It is seasoning time now, so I'm just adding in one bay leaf, one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of cumin, one tablespoon of chili powder, and plenty of salt and pepper. To add some extreme freshness and some extra flavor to this recipe, I'm just squeezing in one lime along with two navel oranges. And then along with that, I am peeling a little bit off of the lime peel and the orange peel. And then I'm just placing it on top and that will infuse this pork with a little bit more flavor. Then I'm just going to put the lid on and put it on low temperature for about eight hours or high temperature for six hours. Here we are about eight hours later. I'm just taking out that one bay leaf and then all the lemon and orange rinds. Next, you're just gonna move your pork shoulder to this aluminum foil cookie sheet, and then you're just gonna shred it up. I'm just shredding it with this little gadget, but you could also shred it with some two forks. Then you'll be adding a lot of that juice that was in that crock pot. I used about three cups of the juice. Then you will put it under your broiler for about three minutes, and then here is what it looks like when it is done broiling. Here I am just plating it up. I just got some of that pork along with some cheese, some lime, tomatoes, guacamole, and some pinto beans. This meal was so, so delicious. I highly recommend it. It was such a simple crock pot recipe. For Friday's dinner, we just made this crazy delicious shepherd's pie. It did not lack in flavor. So what I'm starting out with is I'm getting eight russet potatoes, peeling them, chopping them, and then I'm gonna be putting them in a pot of some boiling water and then draining them and then mashing them and just kind of making my mashed potatoes how I normally would. These are all the super simple ingredients you're gonna need for the filling inside of the shepherd's pie minus the Worcestershire sauce. I forgot to put it in the shot right here, but with this better than bouillon, that's how I made my, ch my beef broth right there, just to let you guys know. To 
begin, I am putting about a tablespoon of some olive oil into my saucepan and then I am adding in my chopped up onion and my chopped up carrots. They do look a little bit funny because they are frozen. I do like to buy them in bulk and then freeze them when I get a chance to, but I'm just gonna saute them up until they get nice and translucent like this. Once they're translucent, I'm gonna be adding in a pound of some ground beef. If you have ground turkey, I think that would work just fine as well. I'm just gonna be mixing it all together and then letting it cook through, then draining the grease. Now I am adding in my frozen peas and then I'm gonna stir it together and just let it sit for about three minutes. Next up is you're gonna get your cornstarch and then add it to your beef broth right there and then you're just gonna whisk it together. You're just gonna be making a slurry out of this and then you're just gonna add it right on top of that delicious mixture right there and then you're gonna keep it on high heat and whisk it all together. Next, you're gonna be adding in your tablespoon of some Worcestershire sauce. Now I'm trying to thicken it up with that cornstarch in there. I'm just adding a little bit of some salt and pepper to taste. You're just gonna keep it on high heat, stirring it pretty much the entire time until you figure out the consistency you would like your shepherd's pie filling to be. Here are those potatoes that I showed you earlier. I just mashed them up, added some butter, salt and pepper, and some milk, nothing big. So into my nine by 13 baking dish, I'm just adding that shepherd's pie ground beef filling, and then I'm just flattening it out. So it is all, you know, up in all the curves and crevices, and then I'm adding the mashed potatoes and doing the same thing with them. And then on top of that, I added about two cups of cheese and then plopped it in the oven. This is what it looked like all plated up, and this was seriously the best shepherd's pie I have ever had in my entire life. That meat mixture was so, so flavorful. It was so good. I highly recommend this recipe. And then along the side, we just had a little side salad, and that was so yummy. I just used some Thousand Island salad dressing on top. For this night's dinner, we made this crazy delicious Pioneer Woman sour cream bake. You're gonna have to trust me on this one. This one is so, so yummy. So what I started out doing is getting a pound of ground beef and I'm just browning it and cooking it totally through in my pan. I'm just adding a little bit of some salt and pepper along with some onion and garlic powder. While the beef was cooking, I just added my medium-sized egg noodles in my pot of boiling water right there, and nothing special. I just cooked those totally through. This recipe is so simple. Seriously, the next ingredient you're just gonna be adding is this can of tomato sauce and then stirring everything together and then letting it come up to a simmer for about five to 10 minutes. Now for the noodle cream sauce, I'm just adding my drained and rinsed pasta noodles along with my sour cream and cottage cheese. If you have fresh green onions, you're gonna be adding them right now as well, but I only had some dried chives, so that's what I added. To assemble this meal, I just have my casserole dish right here, but you could easily use your 9 by 13 baking dish just as well. I just put a layer of those sour cream noodles and then a layer of that meat mixture. I just used my ladle just so it would come out faster. And then I just layered it one on top of each other. And then I put two cups of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese on top and then plopped it in the oven.
here's what it looks like out of the oven this kind of reminded us of a really really easy lasagna recipe to make this was so delicious i highly recommend it we just served it alongside of a side salad And that is it for the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of the prices. And also, thank you guys so much again for the 2,000 subscribers. It's like crazy to me. And if you like this video, go ahead and send it to a friend. They might like it. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.